And then he says, she's only my fifth cousin, so it doesn't even really count. And we're live. You are now listening to Radio Rufus. Hello and welcome back to Radio Rufus. This is, frankly, the most well put together, the most well constructed, funniest comedy podcast in the UK. Uh, we're only below... Olivia Atwood and Joe Rogan, which I would argue isn't even comedy. So we're the number one comedy podcast in the UK. This is Radio Rufus bringing you every week the greatest news, sports, games, songs from around the world. Although some of the scoops might not be quite as fresh as you'd imagined because uh, we're coming at you live from the beautiful retro vintage glory of our 1960s radio station. As always, I... Myself, the uh, debonair, eloquent Rufus Rice is joined by my producer Aiden. Say hello, Aiden. Hello. This is what's coming up on the show tonight. A man in Texas put some antiques up his arse. They, some people play darts outside and a man eats a fruit bag at McDonald's. So, let's get into it. These are the headlines. The security plans for the Paris Olympics have ironically been stolen. An Australian police commissioner under whose watch two men were murdered says haters gonna hate after questioned about her leadership. A man in Texas has been arrested for putting antiques up his ass whilst wearing a kilt and the UK darts open. Let's get into it. We're starting off with not news. The security plans for the Paris Olympics were stolen this week. In an act of ultimate irony, the upcoming Paris Olympics plans were stolen after a man left his bag on a train. A 56-year-old engineer had his work laptop and two USB sticks stolen, which police initially reported did not contain sensitive elements, but only notes related to traffic during the Olympic Games. This was later found to be totally false. The information loss actually relating to crucial IT traffic management systems and law enforcement plans around the Olympics. I think this is just another one in the long and illustrious history of examples of why you can't trust the French with anything. (laughs) It's such a, especially with their history in the past, like maybe seven, eight years, you don't want to be giving away too much security information in that country. Yeah, I was going to say, on a serious note, the uh, whole pray for Paris situation, which happened in about 2015, um, you can't be doing this. Nah. nah. For me, uh, losing security plans is like a one strike policy. It's like that guy who shagged his fifth cousin. Like, <laughs> once you go there once, okay, fine. You didn't know that you were related, mm. but you found out. You don't date her for a year like that bloke did. Yeah, you're returning for seconds. You've sort of crossed the line. You, you can't do this shit twice. Although the French aren't known uh, for their, you know, they're, they're known for low sexual uh, standards, really, aren't they? Yeah. Being, getting loose with it. I wouldn't be surprised if the French were into the fifth cousins sort of thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is absolutely unacceptable, of course. Uh, and what I love about this is how little... There's there's so many levels on which you can't trust the French with this story. Because not only can you not trust this bloke with sensitive government information on a train, I don't know how you get your work laptop and two USB sticks stolen. Don't put it on the luggage rack, right? It's a backpack, right? That's what you put a backpack in there. Just keep it with you. He just needs to learn some basic life lessons before he's luggage. dealing with national security. Exactly. Um, so you can't trust uh, the the HR people who hired him. You can't trust the <laughs> the engineer who lost the laptop. And you can't trust the police who lied about what was on the laptop. <laughs> Very untrustworthy people, the French. Yeah, this is uh, this this could only happen. I'm surprised they've been awarded the Olympics, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> See as well, though, like, just speaking of those years where they were being terrorised, I think it was like 2014, 15, 16, ISIS were fucking prolific, but I haven't heard anything from them in ages. Of the properly fell off. No, yeah, it's uh, like one of those. It's they're sort of like the Adele Tarat. <laughs> the streets will never forget. Darren, yeah, there are streets. I think ISIS are, are streets will never forget. They had a a big moment, as to say that they had a big year. Yeah, they banged a lot of goals. A purple patch. A purple patch. Yeah, mm. in form, if you will. Yeah, because they were future stars for a while. And then they, they really delivered on a promise. Yeah. Sort of like Anthony Martial when he first came to United, <laughs> right? But then I feel like they've had some setbacks. In the years since. And they haven't quite got it together. And now they're, it's sort of a case of what could have been. Yeah, they need like a loan move to try and reinvigorate their career. They definitely need to target somewhere else, yeah. Do you reckon they're just all in like a gap year together? Like all the ISIS boys? Or just the way I like petting elephants and stuff in Africa? <laughs> what, like a... 
like uh, team building. Yeah. <laughs> like make, make, building a human pyramid and stuff. <laughs> I suppose if, if the pinnacle of your career culminated in you offing yourself, you probably wouldn't be in a hurry to get started. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a quick rise through the ranks at ISIS, isn't it? <laughs> I yeah. imagine they have a lot of um, <laughs> employee turnover. <laughs> it's the one job where you probably don't want that promotion. We're like, yeah, we've got a, we've got a fucking, we need to fill some staff. We have yeah. a, a job on at the Charlie Hebdo offices. It's like the it? exact opposite of the fellow studios. No one's applying for those jobs. <laughs> There's no competition. All you, yeah, all you, all you need is an enthusiastic attitude and a driving license. <laughs> Um, but this isn't just a French problem. I do want to talk about this. 4,800 UK government devices have been lost or stolen since 2017. 4,800. It's a lot of fucking phones. It's a lot of phones and laptops. And, and you know, I don't consider myself a particular... I've lost things before. Yeah. But 4,800 phones and laptops since 2017 is... That's a bit excessive. And where's all the info going? That's what I'm wondering. And how are these... Like, I'm assuming we're also paying for this. The taxpayer's paying for those iPhones. 100%. So, MPs, you're welcome. I just bought you an iPhone, iPhone 13 Pro Max. Uh, moving on, then. An Australian police commissioner under whose watch two men were murdered says haters gonna hate after questioned about her leadership. <laughs> New South Wales police, police chief Karen Webb has quoted Taylor Swift lyrics while the force she oversees are still looking for the bodies of two men allegedly murdered last Sunday. She made a, what I think is an ill-advised appearance on a breakfast show where she was questioned about her leadership skills and said the following quote, There will always be haters. Haters like to hate. That's what Taylor Swift says. Like I said, the haters are going to hate and I've got the confidence of the police minister and the premier. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's a hard one to come back from. <laughs> I'm not sure that's what Taylor Swift was talking about. Nah. In the song. Not even Taylor herself could shake that one off. <laughs> I can't talk too much shit about Taylor Swift though. Like she got me through some shit. Like whenever I was like 13, 14 yeah. and was having like girl trouble, I would blast, bl what was the song? Blank Space. Was that, that your... Tune. That was my like breakup song. That was your cry in the shower. Yeah. Stuck it in, on in the, what was it? Probably the, the Blackberry Curve at the time. And just blasted it out. Was that the one with the keyboard where the buttons are way too small yeah. so you can't type My anything? My fat fingers was typing a full sentence every time. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> just comes out and looks like Chinese. <laughs> it's just, trans <laughs> just looks transliterated. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that's... I'm not sure murder is mentioned in the lyrics of Shake It Off. I don't, I don't think... I don't think that applies in this situation. I'm not sure you can just brush it off when two men have been brutally murdered and their bodies are still yet to be found yeah. and you're in charge of that investigation. It was like a gay couple or something. It was yes, it was a hate crime towards the LGBTQ plus community. She described it as a crime of passion, which she also had a bit of backlash from. How does she know? I feel like she did it. <laughs> <laughs> she, she knows some details about the case. Yeah, she knows a lot about this. There's a suspicious amount of detail Pretty for someone suspicious. that's just on the case. But then, but then I guess we're haters and haters are going to hate, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a time and place for saying stuff like this. Um, haters, haters gonna hate are like when you get pineapple chunks in a meal deal and your mates are like, that is a terrible choice. That's haters are gonna hate. That's yeah. a normal situation in which to use that. This is not that. Um, and also, uh, I think this is indicative of a larger thing in our culture. I think Taylor Swift is too, too prevalent in our culture. I'm gonna go out on a limb here yeah. and say her meaty tunes are bang average and are not to be quoted in this sort of um <laughs> this sort of thing and also what is karen doing here why has she agreed to go on telly um and what's she waffling about so karen um time to find a new job i think maybe you could work at woolies uh you'd love that anyway a man in texas has been arrested for putting antiques up his ass whilst wearing a kilt <laughs> okay over to the huffington post now which is of course a very reputable news source who reported last week that a man in spring texas have been detained for, <laughs> for taking items for sale at antique stores and placing them in his anus. He then allegedly put the tainted items back on the shelves, presumably so unsuspecting shoppers would purchase them. He was seen doing this at two different antique shops. Some of the items he contaminated included a makeup brush, an antique bottle opener, and a tobacco <laughs> tent can, whatever that is. The total cost of the items was over $200. The items had to be thrown away because of the poo, obviously. But investigators were able to connect them to the man, which is 
a nice way of saying they had to scrape the scrape the fecal matter off the side <laughs> of the stuff, take a sample from him, and see if they matched in the lab. Um, yeah, we're back into weird fetish territory on the podcast. It's never too long before we get back there. Um, <laughs> the man is all about efficiency. He thought, like, how could I maximize my penetration output? Like, fuck trousers having to undo a belt buttons and shit like that. He just yeah. thought, you know what? I could set it in the most things wearing a kilt. And the fact that he was doing it in the middle of the actual shop. Americans do like to bang on about their heritage, don't they? <laughs> like, it actually doesn't surprise me that a man's, like, cussing about Texas wearing a kilt. Probably thinks he's Scottish. Yeah. Easy yeah. access. It's stylish. There's there's a good airflow. It's actually pretty ingenious if you think yeah. about it. Definitely no pants on under that either. He was yeah. le- he was healthy breeze around the bollocks. He was, <laughs> <laughs> he he was, was letting going, the sack hang free there. He was going commando with it. Swinging like a grandfather clock. <laughs> like the pendulum <laughs> back and forth. Maybe he'll take one of them up the hole next. <laughs> Work up, work up to it. That's yeah, an aspirational thing. Like a vintage Victorian number. Yeah. It's the selection, it's the choice of items that worries me here. Antique bottle opener, right? Yeah. Surely that is just a tetanus magnet. Yeah. Ugh. A bottle it's opener. It's be sharp too. Like, what the fuck? A bottle opener is never blunt. They're uh, always sharp. And I hope it definitely hope it's not a corkscrew one. Ooh, that'd be a different story. Makeup brush. I guess that makes sense. Tobacco tin. I don't know. I feel like if I was going to go into different antique shops and shove things up my ass. Well, firstly, actually, I wouldn't choose an antique shop at all. I'd like something new and clean. Personally. Yeah. Not with <laughs> decades of rust. In it. Dead fingerprints and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, two different antique shops also. That worries me. This guy's a serial <laughs> and antique. Um, I don't even know what the t- keister, I guess, is the term. Um <laughs> He is bound to have the loosest asshole in the world. Nobody's safe. Nah. So if you own an antique shop in the anywhere in the lower 48 United States, uh, you've got to watch out for the bloke in the kilt because he's back on the streets. They let him out on a $100 bond. Only $100. The fucking antiques themselves cost 200 <laughs> Yeah, I know. His asshole is bound to look like it's fucking yawning. For yeah. The amount of stuff he's taking up. But- what do you think he's getting out of this? Do you think it's the, the pleasure of actually shoving things up the arse? Because I don't. I think... There's something a bit deeper here about, like, knowing that other people are touching his soiled items and potentially buying them and taking back to their house. Like, I think that's where the real sort of that gives him the horn. That's where he's getting off on more. It's also I also feel like it's a thrill of doing it in a public setting. Yes, there's a lot of different aspects to this. It's quite a niche fashion. I wonder how you discover that you're into this. See, this is the slippery slope. You know, you you. You finesse a pinky up the arse one day when you're a teenager and you end up doing this and getting arrested. <laughs> Just the, What has to come into your head, though, for you to be like maybe walking through a charity shop or something and you see like, oh, that's that's pretty nice there. That's one thing. But then yeah. going home and devising a plan, buying a kilt for easy access and going to multiple like <laughs> antique shops yeah. to try them out. The Oxfam hoop filler. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah, I might start going around doing this. Maybe it's great. Maybe it's just awesome. Maybe it's just the, the best feeling. And if you only have to pay 100 quid, like, you can well afford that. Man, I feel like in this country, firstly, this would be straight in the Daily Mail. Yeah. It'd be front page news. You, you'd, be, you'd be locked up. You'd be a villain. You couldn't get away on a $100 bail in this yeah, country for doing this. Not it's at all. Absolutely disgraceful. <laughs> Imagine him on, on, like, porn stars. I'd love to see that. Porn stars, right? <laughs> Where someone brings in the antiques, they get the expert in to value it, and then he shoves it up his ass at the end. <laughs> Gives it a rating out of 10. <laughs> antiques Roadshow. <laughs> antiques Roadshow, but everything goes up his ass. That w- I feel like that could, couldn't do anything but up their ratings at the minute. Like, we're bringing a new demographic of these depraved fuckers that we keep yeah. seeing the cover in this show. Yeah, Antiques Roadshow, OnlyFans exclusive content hosted by Fiona Bruce. <laughs> And this man, whatever his name is, he's been kept anonymous, which I think is quite generous because I, I think he deserves to be outed as a wrong one. You would be put on blast over here. You would be in so many fucking Facebook posts. I think you would end up at the sort of level of a Raoul Moat or so, <laughs> someone like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you, you go down in infamy. 100%. <laughs> no, there's, there are always a few rogue people like that that everyone just doesn't forget about. Mm. It's like, who's, who's, in, who's sort of in that category? I guess Jimmy Savile, but this is this is that's a bit more extreme. <laughs> Jimmy Savile done slightly more than take a couple of antiques up his ass. Yeah, and I think he was doing it the other way around. 
<laughs> I don't think you can compare this fucking prick and a kill. Yeah, he was in Toys R Us. No wonder they went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> the tainted Lego. Someone who probably does know the answer to um, <laughs> to how much Lego can you get up your bum is Jimmy Savile. You know the answer to how much Lego you can fit up a toddler's bum. Yeah, probably more accurately. Yeah, Jim Jim will fix. It. <laughs> Jim will fuck it. Jim will fuck it. Ah, <laughs> uh, anyway. Speaking of fucking it, we're going to move on to our sports section. This is Snatch of the Day. The UK Open Darts Tournament concluded this weekend. Uh, did you watch it? I did not, but I've heard a lot about it. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about this because there are two sort of darts competitions going on at the same time. There's the Premier League, which mm-hmm. is a you know a league thing of darts, which has the same eight players every week and they travel around the country and play in different venues, which is super professional. The crowd are really into it. They love it. And then there's the UK Open, which is a one-off tournament that happens every year. And it's a major. They call it a major. You know, it's it's like the Open or the or the, the Masters in golf. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's like the Wimbledon, you know, it's it's a major. The, the prize f- pool is £600,000, which is, um, that could get you a whole uh, campaign of paying people to not, to stop immigration. <laughs> and... <laughs> And then you could buy a, a new Golf GTI afterwards. So that's a lot of money, right? It's a big tournament, right? And the lo- the location, the venue for this major darts tournament is Butlin's Minehead. Butlin's Minehead. Something just doesn't add up about that. I think the vast majority of people don't even know where Minehead is. I'm going to be honest, I have no fucking clue, but it doesn't exactly. sound like your generic area that a darts competition would be hosted. Especially it's, it's open air. Who yeah. the fuck Also, thought? it's open outside. Who plays darts outside? Yeah. Weird behavior. That's like that's like them them playing snooker like in the middle of Oxford Circus. <laughs> you can't play darts outside. The wind's going to affect the yeah, darts. Yeah, true. I never it's, thought of that. They're playing darts in a tent. <laughs> it's, it's genuinely it's in a big tent. It looked like a fucking circus. Yeah, and then all these pensioners from because that's the only people who live in Minehead mm. come out, and th- the atmosphere was so dead. I cannot tell you how how boring this tournament was, and there were some great matches. But all these old grannies who've had like eight strongbows can't even see can't even see the darts anyway. Their eyes are so broken. It was the worst atmosphere. I don't know why it's in Butlin's mind head. It used to be in a stadium in Bolton, which I mean, it's in Bolton, but I, that's better than this. At least it's indoors. Yeah. The grannies are probably not too buzzing about it because they're fucking freezing, sitting outside in the middle of... What, when was this? Was this just a few days ago? Yeah, it, was, it happened on Monday. And uh, it's a real shame, I think, because darts is a fantastic sport. I love any sport where the traditional athletes are not the ones succeeding, if you know what I mean. Mm. Like, just Darts is the kind of sport where someone's chubby uncle could be the greatest of all time. Yeah, And I love that. Like, it's just fat men throwing needles at a clock for everyone to watch. And that's great. And it's been a huge year for darts. So I think it's time to leave Butlins behind. I saw an article as well that he had to defend his pace of play because the crowd were having to go at him for taking too long. Yeah, First so of all, I, I didn't realise that darts fans were such thrill seekers. It's not <laughs> as if it's the fucking X Games. You're watching people throw arrows at a board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was won by the Belgian Dimitri Vandenberg. And what I liked about his win was he was absolutely sloshed on stage. I'm, I'm not surprised he took his time because there was nothing behind those eyes. <laughs> He was just steadying himself. He was literally... I've seen people in (laughs) K-holes who would be better at darts than this. And somehow he won the tournament. That's why we love darts. That's why you want to watch darts. So please don't hold it in Butlin's mind head anymore. There is like a... It's like a trifecta of fat people sports. Like pool, darts, bowling. And anyone can win. I've got like the perfect build for all three. (laughs) But I am literally shit at all of them. So as much as people argue like, oh, it's not a real sport. They're not real athletes. Props to them because they are hard. I, I think, yeah, they are re- real athletes. And obviously darts has the worst obesity epidemic in the in the country. Yeah, I mean, it does. I'm surprised Americans aren't better at darts, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it seems to be dominant. You have to be fat here. to be good. Yeah. Like Luke Littler, right, is 17. 17 and, stone. Yeah, and he's got he's got the timber of like a man who's been drinking eight pints a day for 40 years. Have you seen it? <laughs> yeah. He's a proper barrel, isn't he? Yeah. He just, he lo- 
even his face, I really don't believe he's... Is it 16 or 17? 17? I think he turned 17. That, that can't be right. That's like, you ever see all the, like, AFCON games where there's, like, a Nigerian that looks 46 and he's coming through? It's like, oh, there's our new youth product. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Years he's eight. an up-and-comer, yeah. <laughs> just graduated from the under-21s. Yeah, and it's it's just a shame for darts that's being hold, held in a NAF holiday resort. How so, long do you reckon you'd have to train to compete at a darts major? Okay, well, there's been talk in the office... Uh, about six months of just throwing darts six and you'd be able to compete. I think that's absolute bollocks because I, I don't think darts is a particularly difficult game. It's just doing it in the moment, like under the pressure in the scenario. I think that's what people get completely wrong about all these sports. Yeah, Like it's easy to knock, you know, a few balls in playing pool just with your mates. But if you've got to do it under the bright lights in the biggest stages in the world, yeah. which tends to all be in China these days. Uh, in Butlin's main head. Yeah, in Butlin's Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think you could do it. Yeah, in, in a in a venue as historic and as venerated as Butlin's main head. <laughs> Initially, like before, it sort of started to really go viral recently, especially with all the Luke Littler stuff. Yeah. I was delusional to the point where I would have said, like, you give me a dartboard and a month's holiday from the fella studio when I'd be at the next open. Yeah. But I've been to Flight Club twice since then. It is fucking hard. Like I was, th- I I couldn't even hit the board at times. Yeah, no, I, I respect I respect them, and I think it's very much an athletic game. And I think they're being tremendously let down by holding it at a Chavi Seaside Resort on the brink of bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> right next up, we've got the weather drizzle kicks coming at you live, and it's bad news for all my Afghans out there. Uh, so sorry, Afghans, if you're watching. Uh, maybe a few, maybe a few ISIS members that we touched on before are watching this at work. Um, <laughs> on their tea break. Yeah, on their tea break. But make sure we want low office productivity in the ISIS HQ. Ideally, you don't want that promotion, chaps. Uh, but bad news for my Afghans out there is the northeastern region of your country has been absolutely ravaged by an unseasonal avalanche. Six dead, thirty trapped. Um, it would definitely be worse being trapped than dead. Yeah. Just dying a slow death you don't underneath know an avalanche. Yeah, you don't know if you're getting out at all. You're just waiting for someone to free you or a boulder to fucking cave your skull in. Yeah. Um, I'd rather just have the swift, merciless death. Yeah, I'm in that boat too. Afghanistan is generally quite a dry country, but it's seen uh, huge precipitation. There was some suggestion in the news report that I read, and I didn't write this. I want everybody to know that this was some kind of cosmic, karmic payback for the Taliban. <laughs> Did you say six were dead, though? Yeah. The Taliban definitely had better numbers than that, so we're going to need a few more like Afghan avalanches before we even things out. But it could be. I can see their their logic behind that. Yeah. It's sort of like your, your mate shags your girlfriend, so you steal his TV remote. <laughs> like, it's not the greatest comeback, but no. you still feel quite good about it yeah. when he's trying to hunting around his house looking yeah. for that stuff. Yeah. Whenever, like, Loose Women is on at six, and he's like, where the fuck's the remote? <laughs> I've never pictured snow in Afghanistan, though. Although no, it's yeah, very mountainous country. Yeah, like my knowledge of what it actually looks like is entirely based off the Modern Warfare Two map. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Newtown. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, Afghan. Newtown. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not old enough to play Modern Warfare Two. Really, 2009. Yeah, mate. I was only seven in 2000. I was nine, but still, my parents Anyone... did not let me play COD yeah. when I was seven. We've got an update come in of something we've touched on on the show before tropical storm alvaro uh it's killed seven more people since we reported on it <laughs> i've got the list here no prizes for guessing who skipper private rico Mor- maurice and two lemurs <laughs> <laughs> so, hopefully hopefully it gets that maconga bastard next yeah. i'll never forgive him for what he done to alex this is the thing about I feel bad for Madagascar because it's kind of been is Madagascar's getting spit roasted with the weather at the moment because not only have they had a famine since 2021 now they've got the rains come in they've probably been praying for a bit of rain for mm-hmm. ages and now this has come and just destroyed every crop they have <laughs> they're just getting shafted from all angles from both ends yeah exactly and another news in Ghana it's absolutely boiling and in Greenland it's freezing no so no change there Right, we're going to move on to the questionable segment now. So, uh, I asked everybody, as I always do, a questionable query. And I asked you, what is your worst culinary experience? 
and these were your best responses. We're going to talk about them now. So, <laughs> once I was fed roadkill by my granddad, he forgot to buy the meat for the Sunday roast. No, you weren't. I'm going to say that right now. No one's granddad is feeding him roadkill. Nah. <laughs> From the show so far, we've discovered that granddads might be like locating missing clay penises and stuff like that. Yeah, he's Maybe. Busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're not fucking feeding their grandchildren roadkill for a Sunday roast. Yeah. Who's your granddad? Like Fred West. <laughs> if, if no granddad's was... feeding their own their own <laughs> his grandchildren like a badger that they've hit on the side of the road. Also, you can't pass that off as like a roast chicken. Nah, you're gonna you're gonna catch on to that. You can't have a half a mangled fox carcass <laughs> and put that out there and be like, yeah, yeah, sound. I bought this at M and S today. <laughs> what would be what would be the best roadkill though if you were in that position? Yeah, let's do a roadkill tier list here. <laughs> What's the meatiest roadkill? Probably hitting a, like a whole deer, I guess. Yeah, if you could get a deer, that would be fun. Lovely be venison steak. Dinner. People pay good good money for that on the yeah. shelves of Waitrose. Deer's definitely at the top. I feel like a badger just because of how fucking prickly the bastards are. I f- no, I feel like I feel like a badger would get flattened like a balloon, if you know what I mean. There's not much meat to it. Yeah, I feel like all you squish all the air out of a badger and you're left with just the skin, really. Yeah. Yeah. Badger can be the bottom of the list. Deer's definitely top. If he somehow like fucking there's a, there's cattle loose in the middle of the road and he takes out a cow, I that's guess it's ideal. technically possible for cattle to be roadkill, just yeah. quite unlikely. I don't think I don't want to go to dogs and cats because you know it'd be rubbish, a hedgehog. Yeah, that's like an amuse bouche, isn't it? That's like a palate cleanser between <laughs> between courses. Hedgehog. Nah, hedgehog can fucking sit right at the bottom. You know what I'd quite like like to eat. I don't think it would be nice, but just as an act of vengeance, seagull. Fucking bastards. Yeah. I just hate birds in general. General, they're so annoying. Yeah, right. It's because of all those twats who feed them chips, and then they get used to chips. They're meant to live. In, they're, they're meant to live in the ocean, seagulls, and pluck fish out of the water. Yeah, they don't do that because they're fat, lazy bastards eating chips, and they're ruining. They're ruining people's lives. You never see more seagulls than you do in a McDonald's car park. Yeah. They're just waiting for someone to throw a chip out the window, go through the bins. They're never at the fucking ocean. Just go back to where you belong. Yeah, exactly. It's like my granda there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting out a message to all the seagulls. Time to go back to the oil rigs, or I will or I will bring out my airsoft rifle and hunt down every single last one of you. Bastards. And then we'll scran you for dinner with, you, with this guy's granddad. <laughs> if a seagull tastes like chicken, like I imagine it to, it might not be the worst option, but it I think if you be... slather it in gravy, it'll yeah. be all right. I wouldn't be hunting it like game. I would just be hunting it out of the thrill and the, yeah. the pleasure I get. I think if I was was fed a like roadkill for Sunday roast, it would definitely be one of those things where I'm cutting it into little manageable pieces and putting it with a lot of the other elements of the roast. Yeah. You know, when your parents force you to eat vegetables as a kid, so you like, you're, you're doing like a quarter of a Brussels sprout per mouthful so you can actually get it down. I'd be doing that with the roadkill. Next up. I had a fruit bag at McDonald's once. That's the whole anecdote. <laughs> I don't know how he'll come back. The only man, one. the only man in the history of the UK to have a fruit bag at McDonald's. I'm gonna be honest. I don't even know the fucking done fruit bags. So news to me. Anyone who gets any of the following items at McDonald's is a wronger: salad, carrot sticks, apple slices. Absolutely, I fucking hate anything apple. Mate, if you're going to eat healthily, just don't go to McDonald's. What's wrong with you? Yeah. There's no point in having a salad. You're like Switzerland in the Second World War. Going, you know, I can see I can see the good on both sides. <laughs> I'll be all right. Don't do that. Don't be a fence sitter. Um, don't turn a blind eye to fascism. And don't <laughs> order the carrot sticks at McDonald's. It's wrong. <laughs> Next up, this guy said, um, worst culinary experience, Indian food every time. Sorry to the Indians. <laughs> That's the whole thing. <laughs> That's the whole message you sent. I can actually kind of agree with this, you know. You can vouch for that. Yeah, I fuck it. I tried it once, and first three bites, I was like, you know what? This is actually pretty tasty. I can see myself eating this regularly. Yeah. And then by the fifth bite, my stomach just shit itself, and then I shit myself. It was mm. fucking awful. It just doesn't agree with me. It's You're going to have similar experiences to a lot of things that have been written in on this show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> me and my mates once 360 no scoped a hair. We got food poisoning. I don't think it's possible to 360 no scope something in real life. I just want to give it a quick try. Just like imagine if it's actually possible. Right, so you're you're trying to hit me. So you have to do a full 360 and land back around at me. Right, so I've got my gun. This is gonna be difficult. 
isn't it? Is it still plugged in? Is it? Okay. <laughs> You're gonna get caught in the fucking wall. Right. Right. So I, I'm, I'm lined up. Yeah. It's. I thought that was all right. Yeah. But I feel like you're a little bit bigger than a hair. True. It's easier to hit me. <laughs> I feel like, and you're a bit closer to me. I do feel though that it could actually catch people by surprise because they're not going to think they're about to get no scoped after seeing you do that. In real life, like this isn't a fucking final kill in a COD game. <laughs> so we, I, it, I it probably will stump them to the point where it is an easy shot because they're that fucking gobsmacked at what about- you're doing. I don't know about you, but in my experience, hairs scare quite easily. And they're also quite fast. Like, it's got to be a proper, just, it's RNG, basically, where the bullet is going after a 360 no-scope. So congratulations if you actually did do that. I know you didn't, but um, moving on. My mate, so this is someone sent in who doesn't want it to be them. He said, my mate went on holiday with his new girlfriend in Turkey. First night of the holiday, they go out for dinner. It didn't agree with either of them. Afterwards, she's having liquid shits on the toilet. So when he needed to throw up, his only option was the bathtub. After 15 hours of emptying everything they had into the bathtub or the toilet, they said they would never speak of it again and broke up when they got home. <laughs> so this has happened. I've had a similar experience once. So I was um, was on a night out, house party. And um, I was... And it's always... The trenches... What's really the trenches is having to do a shit at, at a club or at a party. Because <laughs> not only does it look like you're doing drugs, you have you have to take a shit at a club as yeah, well. It's always fucking rank. Like it's oh, mate. the worst possible standards, the yeah. cleanliness standards you will get. It's at like a club. World War One trenches that have just been mustard gassed. You know what I mean? Like you walk into those cubicles in clubs, and now your eyes are your eyes are burning <laughs> from the, the piss in the air. The atoms of, like, urine and stuff. And often, well, the vast majority of the doors don't lock, so you're sort of having to sit on the toilet and then hold your hand up against the door <laughs> like that to stop <laughs> to stop anyone coming in to do bag. Yeah, and then yeah. whenever you're trying to, like, wipe, you're just in a constant state of panic that someone's about to burst through with a oh, fucking mate, bag of Oh, it's so in. vulnerable because you have, like, just shaft and balls on display as well. Yeah. It's absolutely disgraceful. So I, I, I was doing a poo once at a house party, and I had to chun right but i'm not like the guy before i i can't just rip a 180 and do that because i was i was sort of still shitting at the time yeah so i I just went straight sink in front and i just filled up that sink i mean if if you try and go for the bath then you sort of run the risk of shitting all over the floor but it seems like you escaped with keeping the shit where it belongs and the floor puke free so you done pretty well in that one yeah it wasn't I, i i mean it wasn't like my most suave moment but at least everything was contained within a receptacle, if yeah, you know what I mean. It was, wasn't free-flowing. There was good damage control. Yeah, like damage managed, control is exactly yeah. the term I'm looking for. Yeah. <laughs> the day after I got circumcised at 17, I went to get some curry and my knob kept on sticking to my leg because it was inflamed. And I kept gasping in pain and I was telling everyone it was because the curry was too spicy. I'm going to argue that's not strictly a culinary experience. That's more of a medical experience. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Still funny though. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fucking painful though. Imagine imagine sitting there trying to work your way through a vindaloo and your your sensitive knob is just like rubbing up against you. <laughs> oh guys, this curry. <laughs> yeah. It's um, a really mild one, everyone's thinking, what the fuck what what is this pussy waking yeah. up to eat this curry? What you really don't want to do in this situation is get the cross contamination going. You do not want the curry on the freshly exposed belly. Oh. Oh, that would be the worst. That'd be a real medical issue. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. I don't a proper spicy that. slot at the top of your knob. <laughs> <laughs> Once I left it too late on Duke of Edinburgh to get a ration pack. Have you been on D of E or these trips? I don't, know. I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, so you've got to get your orders in for the ration packs early doors because the good ones go quick early. You want, you want, you know, you want something nice. You want like spag bowl or something. Um... I left it too late. Ended up having a vegan, gluten-free, lactose-free chili con carne, which is just like that's just at, at this point that's um, it's just it's, it's a non-food anymore. Yeah, I, I wouldn't feed that to a fucking dog. Never mind a human. Yeah, it was made worse by the fact we were cooking it in the pouch with hot water. Yeah, so it's a boil in the bag 
non chili con carne, a chili non carne, if you will. Um, I was so hungry. I was so hungry. I ate the lot, even though it was grim. About an hour later, I had to run off to the disgusting campsite toilets where I had the shits. Uh, the men's toilets were next to the girls and there was no sound barrier. And as I was midway through the business, a group of girls went into the women's and I'm pretty sure could hear everything. I then snuck around the back way into the campsite and told people I just went for a quick walk. Bear in mind, this was day two. <laughs> I think it's two weeks. Yeah. Um, what I want to say about this is the fact that you would get such terrible effects with this, this is like designed food. Like those those packs are like, that's like science food. It's like going to Heston's restaurant and everything comes in a square and it's made of foam and sort of stuff. Like, I think it's difficult to get diarrhea from that sort of stuff. So it really surprises me. Also, there's nothing in it. Yeah. From what how you've described it, it's basically a bag of dust. So <laughs> just slop. Yeah. There's no actual, there's nothing of substance in that bag to give you the shits. Yeah. I doubt that that's what gave him the shits. There's definitely honest. something else. Yeah. There's something yeah. else that he's not telling us here that has him fucking sitting over the toilet for so long. Yeah. He just he just got back from Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's not saying. That's that's a more plausible explanation to this. Yeah. Not some fucking shit bag vegan curry. Yeah, the next guy. I went to excellent pizza and kebab. Turns out it wasn't excellent. <laughs> the guy in the shop was just wearing a t-shirt and shorts and took 10 minutes to even come to the till. I ordered chips and curry sauce. However, the curry sauce looked like someone had already eaten, digested and shattered it back onto my chips. I'll be honest, most curry sauce looks like that. Yeah. I don't think that's a genuine criticism of curry sauce. No, it's I actually fucking... think that's a defining feature. It tastes unreal whilst looking like diarrhea. That's pretty impressive. You know what it looks like? You have younger brother. I do. You know, like a baby's dro- baby's log. Yeah, like a baby the like a a baby's b- back after a really bad nappy. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just the whole way up, and it's perfectly the shade of like curry sauce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the base ingredient. Yeah, <laughs> I have a similar experience to this as well. Yeah, so I went to one of those dodgy pizzerias. Pizzeria is is too kind a term for these places. You know, like a place that's called Yummy Pizza or something yeah. like that. And it's it's all blokes who, you look at them and you go, hmm, Iran is not that close to Italy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure you guys grew up in Naples. Yeah. Yeah. I worked in a Domino's for three years in the middle of Ireland, and my manager was Iranian. Yeah, exactly. So exactly your point. Yeah. So we ordered some pizzas and stuff. <laughs> My mate's pizza, right? Just as he was taking it out of the, the oven, right? He just dropped it on the floor. <laughs> he just dropped it face down on the floor. And, and then he picked it up like, like nothing had happened. I just gave it to him. No, no shame about that at all. <laughs> did your friend? Did your friend eat it? Or was he like, fuck you? Yeah. He was at a point of steaming where even this floor pizza seemed also, nice. Also, like, it was in, like, a cast iron skillet. <laughs> and it hit the ground and it just made the biggest clang. The ingredients, the sauce has been, just been fucking everywhere. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. That was so... He was, like, picking pubes out of the slices. Uh, yeah. Fuck Wait, me. <laughs> this guy... When he dropped it, he like looks around as as if to say, "Have I gotten away with that?" And we were all just staring at him. Yeah, <laughs> and he just served that anyway. Ah, oh, that's a good time, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, next story. My flatmate in Freshers, who had allegedly consumed some horse tranquilizer, I think allegedly is unnecessary in that sentence. Proceeded to eat a bar of soap thinking it was cheese. <laughs> we saw the soap again soon. I don't think that is a common... You know where you get like the munchies and stuff? Yeah. I don't think a, doing ketamine makes you want to eat fucking soap or cheese for that matter. So I don't know how he got himself in this position. Or so I, f- I feel like... I don't know how you could get through the whole bar. After, after my teeth are approximately... Uh, zero point one centimeters into the soap, I'd know it wouldn't. It wasn't cheese. Yeah, and I, mean, I wouldn't finish the bar. Nah, and that maybe he's just fucking starving and he knows himself, but he's just like, you know what? All I have is this bar of soap to get me through the night, so he yeah. just fucking gnaws through it. But I've even- been there. There's there's some times where you know you're running out of running out of things in the cupboard, so you just have strepsils as a snack. <laughs> if you know what I mean. I also see the logic with like even up until a few years ago, 
I still had to kind of teach myself that just because it smells good doesn't mean it tastes good. And that applies to soaps, to like hand soap. It's like, that smells so fucking fruity. I want to eat it, but mm. it, will, it will poison you. Was this something you were struggling with for a long time? Yeah, up until maybe 16, 17. <laughs> That's so old. <laughs> but you were just, you were just like, chowing chowing down on no i never actually ate it but in my brain i was like fuck that smells like it tastes unreal even yeah. though i know that it's not fit for human consumption you just gnawing through pages of the scratch and sniff perfumes in the <laughs> magazines just <sighs> <laughs> i was at a uni house party in the living room with several others and suddenly out of nowhere my mate whips three oysters out of his pocket that he's foraged for during the day and starts trying to crack them open with a knife firstly where are you going to uni that's one of the posh prick unis, 100%. Nah, no, it can't be. Who's who's like, oh, mate, you know what? I've got a lecture in the morning and an afternoon one. Nice nice uh, break in the middle, so I'll go and forage for some oysters. <laughs> it's not something that's easily transportable in a pocket either. No. A fucking th- oyster. I think this has to be some, like, Cornwall mentalist or stuff. Do you reckon? Yeah. So I've never had an oyster. Well, every episode we talk about food, and it's like, oh, I've never had that. Yeah. But oyster is a fucking obvious One day one. we'll do an Aiden Tries Things special where I give you all this disgusting stuff and you will invariably... Well, I, not disgusting. I think oysters are lovely. Yeah. But you won't like it. It's abs- It will be disgusting to me. Yeah. Everything we have discussed in this podcast so far will f- go through me for a shortcut. Anything that's not, you know, uh, vaguely similar to bangers and mash, you tend to turn <laughs> your nose up at. I like Mexican food. I initially thought, right, this is going to fucking go through me because of the spice and stuff, but yeah. I've got, I'm big into it. But see all this seafood shit and calamari and everything that you've mentioned. Your, what I imagine your breakfast, lunch, and dinner is every day. Smoked and salmon, it, scrambled eggs, toast. Yeah, it, yeah. I like toast. The other you things like to, oh, fuck off. That surprises me, actually, that you like toast. I'm a monoculture. <laughs> yeah, it's quite out there for you. So uh, this guy's whipped three oysters out of his pocket, <clears throat> starts trying to crack them open with a knife. After some considerable considerable effort to get at the goods resulting in unholy amounts of oyster juice on my shoes he starts offering them around to people many refuse but in my drunken haze i'm convinced to eat one along with two others it's not until the following evening that i'm glued to the toilet with brownish liquid shooting out of two of my orifices i wonder which two if you're pissing brown you've got something really wrong yeah with you. yeah their oysters have been fucking spiked for some shit yeah also what the fuck did you expect you're eating pocket oysters it's not as if it's like a five-star dining experience you're gonna be shitting your guts out the fact that it is coming out yeah people shit their gu- people shit their guts out eating oysters in restaurants yeah like fresh fucking ready made stuff this one and this has come out of your mate's pencil case so <laughs> <laughs> i can't imagine they'll be very good picking the lint off the oyster from the fucking pocket he said like, oh shit i got i got seawater on my notes <laughs> just carrying them around loose in his backpack all day <laughs> just fried the usb sockets in his <laughs> in his computer <laughs> haven't touched an oyster since yeah, I'm not surprised, mate. Also, you need to get some new friends. You can't be associating with people who forage for oysters at, at lunch break. That's like being mates with those kids who pull their trousers all the way down at the urinal. <laughs> so they're just chilling there at school with the bum cheeks out. <laughs> and they go, oh, what's up, mate? And the cheeks are just on display. Yeah, as you, if there's nothing wrong with that. They're you can't be like, friends with those people. No. And you can't be friends with this guy. You've got to find some new mates. Okay, next up. My friend went on a date... And the girl described herself as a hedonist. Uh, do you know what that a hedonist is? I actually is? don't. Explain. Okay. Right. For some reason, he thought a hedonist was a pescatarian. Do you know what a pescatarian is? Yeah. Got it. And spent the rest of the evening furiously ordering seafood dishes. So pescatarian, obviously, is someone who doesn't uh, eat meat but does eat fish. Uh, a hedonist is um, someone who, who is a pleasure seeker. He <laughs> likes to go out there and live in the moment and have fun. And Not he's even some, remotely similar. He, is, he somehow mixed that up with pescatarian. <laughs> and he's gone, yeah, calamari. Calamari it is. Get the white bait in. Fish and chips. Fancy fish and chips. Yeah. Anchovy pizza all round. Fried squid. She's expecting like beer maxing and shit. And he's like, oh, well, I've, I'll do you a card and chip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so funny. I just, it's, I don't know how you could possibly mix that up they're not even remotely similar they're not in the, even in the same genre of word i don't sound at all similar either i'd understand like pescatarian and presbyterian or something which again are two very different things but. i think a- a- anyone who identifies with an arian at the end yeah. of the thing is just insufferable yeah do you know what i mean vegetarians is that vegetarian pescatarian presbyterian are there any others 
Arian. Arian, yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Um, yeah, if if you meet someone for the first time, they bring up any Arian. Yeah. You know that this is going to be a rough combo. Yeah, especially just Arians. You're like, right, this probably isn't someone I want to befriend. Yeah. My hair's not light enough for that. Yeah, I don't have blue eyes either, so mm. I don't really, I don't really fit into. The oh mate, you'd be, it'd be over for you. Yeah, I'm fucked. In the in the in the under the regime of fascist Germany, yeah, I'd be I would be one of the first people handing my shoes and those straight to, straight to Poland. Eight tinned be- oh, This is difficult to say. Eight tinned butchers tripe. Uh, so tripe is sort of the uh, the lips and arseholes, not the cuts of meat. It's sort of the off cuts that nobody wants. With my hands off the floor out the back of a pub. It was a contest to see who could finish their portion first, and as expected, spillage was ruled lickage. Yeah, you did that to yourself. Um, I have absolutely zero sympathy for you because you and your moronic friends decided to do this. Next up, chicken liver parfait. This is where... That sounds lovely, chicken liver parfait, which I'm sure you eat all the time. Yeah, regularly. Um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, except... This was in the Holiday Inn in Glasgow, <laughs> which aren't... I don't know if you know this about Glasgow Holiday Inn. It's not known for its culinary brilliance. It doesn't have a Michelin star, let's just say that. Farted in the shower and cacked all over the bath wall and curtain. Uh, oh, mate, he's properly pebble-dashed it as well. <laughs> you just know it was fucking expensive. He's done a full Banksy. Just <laughs> <laughs> Spent 30 minutes hosing it down. Oh, that's how you know it's bad because that should not take first. No, nah, it mu- it, there must. That's be a lumps. five minute job yeah. maximum, especially if you've got a decent shower head. That's just fucking a couple. It of must go-overs. have come out at significant velocity yeah. for it to strike the wall in such a manner. It got into the grout of the tiles yeah. and everything. It looks like someone had been murdered in there. It's just like the poo splatters all over the wall. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. Thank you for your submissions. Next episode. We had so many. Next episode, we're going to be covering the same topic. But now we're going to be moving on to Gamey Schumer. And this is a game I've invented today. Uh, And it's never been played before, so I will just clarify the rules before we start. It's called Sodium Carousel. Here are the rules. Uh, It's basically a a game of categories. Mm -hmm. So if we were to do a quick example now, let's do, you know, actors. I'd say Leo DiCaprio. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Robert Downey Jr. Robin Williams. Okay, and that's it. Except there's a little twist. Here's where the sodium comes in. So we've both got bottles of salt. And each time you give an answer, salt in the mouth. And I don't know who's going to lose, but I think it will be obvious that somebody loses in the end. So even if you win, technically, by continuing to say another name you still take salt in the mouth it might be like the cold war no winners do you want to go first okay i'll I'll start us off i'll serve um i let should we do let's do football teams as a category yeah okay bryson accrington stanley crew arsenal man city <laughs> liverpool oh <laughs> At the bear, <laughs> Shamrock Rovers, Young Boys, BSD Young Boys, Inter Milan, Final uh, <laughs> Back Tay, <laughs> Bayern Munich, Stuttgart, Bayer Leverkusen. <laughs> Blackburn Rovers Blackpool <clears throat> nah. Yeah uh, I, I don't feel like a winner uh, I don't know where to put mine Give me that glass <laughs> uh. 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 Oh Oh my god It feels like I've just drunk the tears of a victim, if you know what I mean. It's painful. It's not a bad game, you know. (laughs) There's potential for that. 
maybe one to pitch to Hasbro. Oh. Oh. I keep getting... I can't get rid of the taste. Yeah, I keep getting these Vietnam flashbacks. Awesome, mate. I feel like a beach whale. <sighs> the initial thing wasn't bad. And then, as you keep it in your mouth, it turns into this sludge. It's like a paste. This paste. Yeah, it's yeah. like something you would fucking put a wallpaper on with. Yeah. It is brutal. But do you wanna do you wanna play a game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. So that was sodium carousel. I'm in extreme pain. Feels like I've just ingested a lot of seawater. Yeah, me too. Especially like the, the corners of my mouth, they just fucking burn so bad. <laughs> yeah, that's um that's saltier than the Casa More segment of Love, Love Island, isn't it? <laughs> So if you want to see us play another game of Sodium Carousel, comment it down below, like, subscribe. And if we get to 10k subs, we're going to play a second round. I'm obviously currently losing down 1-0. Um, so, so it'll be interesting to see how the series continues. So please get us there. Do subscribe to the channel. Now, we move on to our next segment, Invention Center. This is where I have come up with a wacky solution to a problem nobody really has. And Aiden will tell me if it works for him. So, uh, do you like a meal deal, Aiden? I fucking love a meal deal. Yeah. I like a meal deal as well. Although I think it's not really a meal or a deal these days. Because that's not enough food to constitute a meal. And it's not a deal since it went up to £3.50. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah, fucking yeah. extortionate. Yeah. And another problem is, there's a lot of packaging for the amount of food. So I've come up with an ingenious new way to save time in a meal deal. Why don't you just put it all into one sandwich? <laughs> what sandwich is it? Unfortunately for you, we've got tuna mayo and chocolate brownie here. Or you have you have a choice. I gave you a choice. There's two different ones. The other one is uh, tuna mayo and lemon drizzle cake. So which one do you want? I'm definitely going to go with the chocolate brownie. Tuna mayo chocolate brownie? Yeah. Okay. Give me the whole thing just so yeah, it doesn't yeah. fall everywhere. Just in case you get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Last week I got like a lovely warm beverage. I don't know what the fuck that is. Mate, it I, looks like shit. Mate, show it to the camera. I think that looks delicious. Oh, look at that. All all the nutrients you need for a healthy, healthy growing boy. I actually do like tuna though. So it could Well other people that hate how it. would you have felt because I was it was I was tossing up between egg and tuna. I had a the egg alone would have made me fucking book if you had a went for that. <laughs> I anyway, get a nice big bite of that and tell <sighs> me what you think. I, that one looks fucking vile. You know what? If I try this one, it could be up for you. And it's a chocolate brownie. Yeah, chocolate brownie and tuna mayo, the classic combo. Oh yeah, get in. I want to see you get in the middle. No, you don't like it. No, nothing bad kicked in yet. <laughs> oh, you like it? I've accidentally invented something good for t two times in a row now. See, the chocolate is that rich; it almost overpowers the taste. Is of it tuna. like? Is it a brownie sandwich? Is that what <laughs> basically? It somehow overpowered the flavor of tuna mayo. It is pretty gritty, but <laughs> texturally, it's not all there. It's good kick. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm glad you didn't get casted to do kitchen nightmares because you would have just loved all the food. <laughs> <laughs> you could, you would have gone to the most derelict restaurant in the arse end of America and they'd serve you like wartime rations and you'd be like, oh, this, this <laughs> scrans top, mate. I don't know why anyone's complaining. It's delicious. <laughs> I also don't earn enough to turn down a free sandwich. I am fucking skint. I need it. Yeah, that's. I might even eat this one. Well, we said we were going for a work lunch after we recorded this. There you go. I've already got. Yeah, nice. Are you? I got dessert. Maybe you're well. just chowing down on it. I might as well. I might as well. Are you going <laughs> to finish it? <laughs> Invention center really hasn't worked out the way you thought it would. <laughs> Mate, I, th I thought you were going to be miserable about this. You're loving it. It's generally, I don't know what it is, but I'm not even. I'm not even just pretending. Like I really, I'm picky eater. Yeah. If there's something I don't like. I will spit it everywhere. Mm. But, 
I have time for this. So, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda, if you're watching, I think you need to update it. Save you money on packaging. It's better for the planet. It saves people time when eating it. It's time to put all the elements of the meal deal into the sandwich. The only thing is, if you give me like a, a Pepsi Max to dip it into, just to really complete it. But we've you, that you, have you got you got something under your desk? No, I finished. <laughs> For the sake of this, it's finished. Oh, mate. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed that. I got you a little snack during the show. You know what it is, though? It's it's not the combined ingredients. It's just the chocolate's getting a bit sickening. That's the only reason I'm not <laughs> too rich. It's too rich. It's too good. Yeah. Thanks. Do you want to try the other half? Oh, for fuck's sake. It's always backfires. I hate tuna. <coughs> just the... <coughs> mate, just the fumes coming off that are enough to get my eyes watering. You want to give it a go? Dude, this is like Bush Tucker trial, mate. I feel like I'm on I'm a Celeb. I'm going to have a tiny corner. You need to get into the ingredients, though. <laughs> oh, go, no. go the middle. Mate, why... It, they, they've normally distributed it over the over the course of the sandwich. Why can't they just have an even bit of tuna? <sighs> Spectacles, testicles, wallet, and watch. <laughs> no, immediate rejection. Immediate rejection. <laughs> Thing is, I didn't even taste it. That was just my body telling me to get rid of it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it now. Now that I'm in the meat of the sandwich, I'm going to have a little bite. Mate, I was fine until I hit the fish. <laughs> through that cake, I was great through the cake. And then as soon as I hit the fish, it felt so out of place. Well, oh. do you want to try the, no. the corner? Of the I, I mostly don't want to try that because it's got your spit all over it. Yeah, but it. there's a corner of it that I haven't bit into. Uh, you're, you're all good, mate. So I'd say that's a draw for Invention Center. It's sort of a win. You think it's great. Yeah. I'm not so sure. <laughs> I enjoyed the, the toffee slash key, the, the beverage you presented to me a couple episodes ago. Fucking beautiful. Yeah. I've, I've literally had like three of them since. I don't know if I'm going to be in a hurry to put a fucking slice of cake inside my next tuna sandwich, oh, but mate. it wasn't unpleasant. Anyway, if you if you want to um, have the other half of this, email Cal Freezy at the Fella Studios and uh, we'll send it to you. Right here on screen. That's right the now. official email for this podcast. Okay. Now. Oh, I touched it. Oh, he touched it. I don't know why that freaked me out. It's all wet and gooey. It's like, um, do you, have you ever like, do you ever do that thing in primary school where you go to a farm and you have to like touch the animals and stuff and they're like yeah. freaky gerbils? They put, they put it in like a circular hole in a box and you don't yeah. know it and it's like someone's cock. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a glory hole. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, do you hear that? Yeah. Phone's ringing. Oh. Oh, it's, it's Gerhard. <laughs> Haven't heard from Gerhard in a while. Not for about 16 years, I don't think. Yep. Cheers, mate. It's the most relaxed German I've heard in a while. That guy. Anyway. We've just had some news come in from our German correspondent Gerhard Mannschaft in Berlin. This is today's news, today of course being the 13th of August 1961. Gerhard wasn't let into Berghain, so he was just prowling the streets of Berlin like a horny man leopard uh, when, he when he accidentally slammed straight into a brick wall, is what he said to me. Those are his words, not mine. Um, that wall wasn't there before. After he had sobered up, he realised that secretly, in the middle of the night, the East German army had torn up all the roads and replaced them with fence, bricks and barbed wire. Socialist Unity Party Secretary, Walter Ulbricht, made the following statement. Niemand hat die Abscheid, ein Mauer zu erichten. I have no idea what that means. Google Translate won't be around for another 50 years, so... We'll just have to guess at that. This move from the East Germans has come off the back of US President John F. Kennedy accidentally announcing at a convention in the US, uh, sorry, at a convention in Vienna that the US would not oppose an East Berlin border wall. That's probably the worst thing that's going to happen to him for a while. <laughs> 
Word of advice, though, Johnny boy. Stop showing off. Ditch the convertible. You'll thank us later. Yeah. Don't have a midlife crisis and buy a flash car. We'll come, come back to bite you. Anyway, yeah. So, there's a wall in the middle of Berlin. That's some fucking night's work. Putting up a full wall across Berlin in one night. It's a long shift, isn't it? Do you reckon they're repaired per brick? Like 50p per brick. <laughs> 50, 50 Reichsmarks <laughs> per brick. Yeah, they're all millionaires now. Yeah, it is mental to think, though, that just overnight disappeared. Imagine waking up the following morning, especially like this fucker, and just a wall across your front yard. Mate, he just... It's just down the middle of his road now. Mm, yeah. Pretty inconvenient. Yeah. And people are profiting off this. A pound, a pound per metre of barbed wire. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's, it's got to be Pete. Because imagine if, like, you woke up and suddenly you couldn't go to South London anymore. Yeah, I'd be fucking fuming if I woke up and all of a sudden I couldn't get to Croydon efficiently. Yeah. I think it's a lot worse if you're in South London and you can't get to North London. What if they put? What if they just like drained the Thames, put up a massive wall, cut down all the bridge? I think London would be greatly improved. Our side, yeah, be good for tourists as well. Fuck the London Bridge and the big clock. Yeah, just this wall across the Thames. People love that sort of stuff. People still go to look at some bricks in Berlin. Yeah, it's only like half a wall. If we get a full wall across London. Yeah, I, I don't think that the wall is gonna be. Strong enough, if I'm honest. I think the wall's going to come down within a year. I don't think this will go anywhere. No, I couldn't see it lasting. A bit like the Beatles. It's just some... Yeah, just like the Beatles. I mean, it's just... um, It's just some bricks. I mean, Bob the Builder could get through that in a day. (laughs) Easily. Any man with a sledgehammer that's just had, like, a bad day and wants to take out some rage will go through that for a fucking shortcut. I know for a fact our German correspondent Gerhard Manshaft has a sledgehammer as well. Yeah, So I suspect he'll be rushing through this. It's good, because... it's sort of a toss up which side of Germany you got put into. He thankfully west, not, but it was only one road over. It was in his, it was through his hood. <laughs> he was very close. He was on the border. It was like when they expanded Heathrow and put a new runway next to those guys' homes, um, except they didn't. <laughs> so they didn't get a vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If only they had some sort of like mustached, no nonsense dictator to like put an end to silly ideas like this. Yeah. It would be great to have someone with strong ideas who didn't stand, who didn't take any shit. Yeah. And then they wouldn't have a wall in the middle of their most important city. Yeah. I suppose Germany will learn. Yeah. And it's got to be peak for the East Germans as well, because now you can no longer go to a, a homosexual techno club with a gimpy dress code and get shat in the face <laughs> on, the, on a weekly basis, which is really... Unfortunate. And also, like, if you were on the border, can you imagine your like local shop was just over the wall, and all of a sudden? Oh, mate, I'd be fuming. Yeah, imagine yeah. there's a there's a co-op around the corner, and you can't go anymore. <laughs> You've got to queue up for rations at the, at the state office in East Germany. That's that's what would really piss me off. Yeah, like if you had to go, can't like, get, um, you can't get like the Panini stickers for the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> what World Cup would be? Yeah, the 1966 World Cup too is just around the corner. Well, I would I would argue the 62 one is closer. Yeah, <laughs> but you know it's up for debate. Today, of course, being the thirteenth of August, nineteen sixty-one. Yeah, I missed that date. I yeah. was thinking, like, fuck, England might be in for a shout. I was really interested that the Beatles came up as well, given that their their first song uh, hasn't come out for another year. <laughs> <laughs> so you're really on the pulse there. You're into some underground indie stuff, like the Arctic Monkeys. Yeah, right. Showing you'd be like showing girls your your records and stuff, and being like, oh, you've never heard of these guys. This is a demo tape. Yeah, like the Beatles. The Beatles they're, first they're ever so recorded. Edgy. Yeah, they're right. so edgy. No one has ever heard of them. Your, yeah. your grandchildren are going to love it. Yeah. At the end of the wire here, and this is uh, Gerhard's words, not mine, it also says, uns, 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 uns. <laughs> so there we go. That is the news of the day. <laughs> and so that brings us very smoothly on to the musical serenade we always have at the end. Now, this week, I had the pleasure and privilege of hanging out with a few um, OnlyFans girls at an industry party. And so I've been inspired to write a parody about that. This is if Halo by Beyonce was about breaking up with your girlfriend and then she starts an OnlyFans. Remember when we broke up you were such a regular chick We'd agreed on no contact But I had to have a look at your pics 
And something on your wrist had changed Your bio had a brand new lane I wanted to see what you were up to So I had to claim Oh God, I've had a howler You're selling pics of your growler You're taking off your trousers And it's only ten quid a month Now every group chat I'm in Is sharing videos of your cave Everyone sucked to your a-hole You're making dosh from my mates Remember our private nights You're sitting all over my face All those memories are wrecked now Cause everyone can pay to see your a-hole, a-hole, a-hole Pay to see your a-hole, a-hole, a-hole Looking like a bagel, bagel, bagel I can see your a-hole, a-hole It's a fiver per cheek of your bum For a hundred quid you'll fart on a cake Thinking about you collaborating Ruins every one of my days Cause even Robbie Fowler Could have a look at your growler You must be making thousands Selling feed pics to freaks Now every time I scroll my feed I see you twerking in lingerie Advertising your content Can't get it off my for you page a bloke flew you to Dubai Now you're shitting all over his face I just gotta hide and lay low Cause everyone I know has seen your a-hole, a-hole, a-hole Pay to see your a-hole, a-hole, a-hole Looking like a bagel, bagel, bagel I can see your a-hole, a-hole <laughs> there we go. 10 out of 10. You're liking that. He loves the feet pics. Anything with feet pics in the, in the mention, he absolutely loves it. Thank you so much for listening to Radio Rufus. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we're back every Wednesday at 6pm with the greatest content on the internet. And we'll see you soon.